Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's 2019 and I hope you've all had a great Christmas and a good New Year celebrations. Um, I've had a little bit of a cold and a bit of a flu recently. It sort of knocked me for six and put me in bed and stuff and my voice went. And it's just starting to come back now. So um, I'm not going to talk too much in this video because I don't want to strain it too too much. But, um, you know, I'm just itching to get out and do some photography. So uh, this afternoon I'm going to be doing some long exposure photography on film. Now, when I first started photography many years ago, I used to do a lot of long exposures on digital. And it's one part of photography that I really enjoy, especially living near beaches. I quite enjoy doing long exposures around the sea and doing seascapes and stuff. When I started shooting film, uh, it was one area that was a little bit grey to me. I, I just couldn't, no matter what I did, I couldn't quite get it right. And um, I still haven't today, but I think 2019, I'm going to start doing a series of videos on long exposure photography on film and hopefully start to get a little bit comfortable with it, a little bit more confident and start nailing some great prints in the darkroom. So um, this afternoon, I'm going to start doing just that. Um, before I start on the video, I've just got to mention um, a couple of people and uh, give great thanks, really. Uh, first is, you know, one thing I've learned about doing this channel is how kind people are. And not only have I learned more about film photography, learning with you guys and the comments and everything else that comes through and, and the private messages, but uh, I've also learned how kind people are. And um, I've had some films sent to me uh, in the past and cameras and stuff, and I've mentioned that. But uh, just before Christmas, a guy called Cruno from, um, from Ireland, he sent me some film and I've got them here in this little jug. <laughs> and uh, there's too much to go through, but um, there's all sorts of different film, out of date film in here that I'm looking forward to trying out, some infrared film, um, some Agfa Chrome 505, 120 film as well and uh, some other bits and bobs in there. He also sent me a little camera, uh, a, camera a little film uh, clip for when I'm drying, so that might come in handy at some point. So, Kruno, thanks very much, mate, for sending me those rolls. I'm going to be using them throughout the year, and uh, it'd be interesting to try out some out-of-date stock. And uh, also got some film sent by uh, Mr. Casey Face out in the States, over in LA there, and uh, he sent... <laughs> I've had to bag this stuff in different bags because he sent me a, a, um, a mixture of colour and black and white and I haven't even ventured into colour yet but I think that's going to push me into doing more more, more colour film photography so uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to work on some chemicals and, and get working on that at some point but he's, I've got a whole bag of, of colour film here so, um, most of it's in date um, even got some of the uh, Kodak um, E100 film that's new Ooh, see it's open the bag yeah, he's given me some Kodak, uh, what's it called, Ektachrome, that's it, the E100, the, uh, the colour slide reversal film, uh, Ektile 100, there's just so much colour stuff in here that I'm going to be trying out, so um, thanks a lot mate for that, I really appreciate it. And also um, lots of different black and white films as well, so I'm going to have to try and get some different developers for some of these films, um, like some of this Adox film, and uh, I've also got some... Uh, cine steel film as well um, so I'm gonna have to play around and see I don't want to waste it so I might as well research and try and find out what best development to use for these for these films um, so there's a bag of black and white there and uh, I got given this little camera box for Christmas by my mother-in-law and uh, I put some films in there as well which was also sent by Mr Casey Face I've got a whole range of black and white films in here um, that I'm going to be using some of these films I've never even seen before so it would be quite interesting to use. I'm not going to go on about it on this video, but um, just watch out because I'm going to start using these films throughout the year. So, uh, um, yeah, Casey, thanks very much, mate, for sending them to me. I really do appreciate it. And one of the films I'm going to be using today or this afternoon, let's put that to one side, um, which Casey sent me is uh, Codex T-Max 100 film. So this is the film I'm going to use for the long exposure photography this afternoon. 
So um, I'll just quickly show you the kit that I'm going to use this afternoon for my photographs. And I say this afternoon because the sun sets here in the UK around about half past four, five o'clock. So, and it's quarter to two at the moment. So I need to pretty much pack my gear and get down the beach. But I'll show you what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the Zeiss Icon Netar. I like this camera. It's fully uh, manual. I've got other videos on this. And um, yeah, this is the camera I'm going to be using. That's the film, the T-Max 100 I'm going to be using. I've also got a shutter release cable as well for my long exposures. And I'm also going to be using a ND8 filter, which gives me three stops less light as well. But it's the only one I've got, and I haven't got any filters that fit this lens on this icon. So I've drilled a little tiny hole and put a screw here and a rubber band that will hopefully somehow keep that on there when I'm doing my long exposures. So um, we'll soon see when we get down if that works or not. I like improvising sometimes. Um, I'm going to be shooting it on, at the moment you're seeing this on a DSLR, but I'm just to, to keep things light, I've got this little Canon um, power shot camera, so I'm going to shoot the video down the beach with this. Hopefully it will come out all right because uh, it's nice and light. So, But uh, back to the photography side of things. So yeah, I've got that. I've got a little tiny grip that I'm going to be using. I've got a chopping board in case I need to put the camera on the sand. On wet sand, it won't move. And I've also got this bean bag that's made out of an old Lasterlite bag. Uh, inside there's loads of barley, so it's like a bean bag. So um, if I do need to get across any obstacles like rocks or whatever, or stones, I don't know, I'll just put the bean bag down, stick the chopping board on top, put the camera on top of that, and take the photographs. So uh, nice and simple setup, nothing too hard. The photographs that I want to try and get, um, I want to come real low down on the sand and looking out. So I'll be sort of like looking for, oh, I'll be sort of looking for a contrasty looking um, print with lines. I'm looking for lines. If I find any decent stones or any sticks, I might take a couple of shots. The clouds at the moment, they're, it's pretty overcast. There is clouds up there, but uh, there's not much wind. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, be expecting any, any motion in the clouds at all. But obviously the sea, yes, I will. So um, we'll see you when we get down there. Anyway, let's uh, get all this stuff in the bag. Let's get down the beach and see what we can come up with. So it's 10 to 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm nice and wrapped up because I don't want this shitty flu to come back on me again. Um, and I'm using that Canon Power Shot, guys. Let me know what you think of it. I'm walking around with it on a little tiny um, grip. But basically, I'm going to be walking. You can see right over there. Uh, there's no one around. It's nice and quiet. So, uh, but that's where I'm going to be going to sit around and uh, do some long exposures and like I said I'm no expert on long exposures at all and I'm certainly no expert on understanding this uh, reciprocity failure so all I can do and all I can offer in this video is just trial and error and that's a lot of what photography is about as well especially when you're starting out is trial and error trying stuff out if you mess it up go back and learn by your mistakes um, there's a couple of things that I've bought with me that I didn't mention um, earlier on when I was indoors and that's a little notebook to write down my exposure times and what I've done and uh, also a light meter. Now usually I bring out my DSLR and do some metering. Oh, I've got a puddle here. Shit on it. Uh, hang on. Usually I... Um, oh, bugger. Right. <laughs> I'm over that little puddle down there. Um, yeah, usually I'll bring out my DSLR and do some test shots and metering that way, but I decided not to bring it. So I've just bought a, an old Minolta light meter and I'm just gonna do some incident readings because it's pretty flat, as you can see. Uh, so I can't, shouldn't really go wrong with that. Uh, yeah, so that's a couple of extra things that I've bought and certainly the notepad's gonna be going to be handy as well so uh, I'm going to keep walking 
till I get right over there, plot up and uh, see what we get. So one of the decisions I'm contemplating at the moment is whether to stay here, very minimalistic. Um, it'd look alright in the dark room, I can gradient the sand, make it look dark and the sky as well and do a bit of um, dodging on the sea to make it pop a bit. Or over there, if you can see I've got rocks and boulders and stuff, but there's not a lot of contrast around, so I'm only thinking that those rocks and boulders are just going to look a bit a bit drab in the photograph, really a bit dull. Um, the dark rocks, and there's no sun. And the sun is not setting over there, the sun rises over there, the sun is setting behind me, which is going to be ideal because I'll be able to do some longer exposures um, sooner in the afternoon. Um, because if the sun was going to set over there, that means I'm not going to be able to get any long exposures for, for quite some time. Uh, so it's ideal over here on this side of the island. But here's those rocks I was telling you about. It might look all right, you know. I might start off around here, actually. I've got some, you can see there's plenty of highlights there in the water. And for long exposures, it might work out okay. Also, the tide is coming in as well. So, if I plot up here, no doubt in half hour's time, I'm gonna be back there somewhere. So there's gonna be a lot of moving around. Um, but I'm going to put up here on these rocks, just down here, and try and get a couple of shots here. They're not going to, I don't think I'm going to hit the reciprocity values yet. I don't think my exposures are going to be longer than one second. Um, but still, I've got 12 shots in that camera to try out. And uh, so I'm going to put up here, do some metering, and see what I can do. So my first reading, uh, F, I've got my f-stop set at f-16, so my first reading says uh, we're allowing for that three-stop um, uh, ND filter that I've got on there. It's giving me four seconds. Um, now I've got to take that reciprocity failure into action. So four seconds, it reckons half a stop. So a full stop would be eight seconds, so I'm reckoning about six seconds. So I'm going to do my first exposure at six seconds, and I'll write the meter reading down in my little um, notebook, and then write what I've done. So uh, let's take the shot first. So I said six seconds at F16, let's do that. I better hurry up. Oh. <laughs> The ND filter's popped off. That's flush against the lens. And I've got my little timer for six seconds in my pocket. And one. Okay, here we go. Six seconds. Two, three, four, five, six. So that was a six second exposure, the first shot. And I write that down in my book. Look at this, really starting to kiss the, the water now. I'm gonna do a couple more exposures, see what we get. So the first shot was Six seconds, F16. No four second reading. 
I'm going to do another one at four seconds. I'm going to count this this time. I'm not going to use the timer. I'm sure I can count four seconds, okay? I've now got to wind the film on. Whoa. Just shot number two. Oh, so the water's coming around nice. And this chopping board and bean bag's keeping it all stable for me. So let's do another one at four seconds. When that water comes in, I'll do four seconds. Okay, four seconds. One, two, three, four. That was four seconds. So let's move back a bit now. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm up to at the moment. I'm just keep my eye on the camera. Um, I've only taken two shots and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the video camera away. I'm going to carry on with the rest of the photographs that I want to take around this scene and uh, keep writing my notes down. And when I get back, I'll show you the negatives and the uh, exposure times as well. To be honest with you, I'm not hoping for too, too much. If I get a decent photograph out of this, I'll be happy. The uh, ND filter keeps flipping off, off of the camera, which is a pain, but I'm here, so I may as well get on with the best that I've got. So uh, let's put the camera, video camera away and I'll continue with the photographs. That way I can work a little bit quicker and uh, concentrate on the photography a bit more as well. Um, the light's just starting to fall as well, so um, I better crack on. Okay, so I'm now in a dark room and I've just put the Kodak Team X100 inside this dark tank here and it's in there ready to be developed and it's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, there's an old film. You can see there's an old film there. Um, so it's sitting inside there like that. Um, let's put that away. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a pre-soak, a pre-wash, just to get any of that anti-aliation uh, die off because I don't want that coming into my fixers and my stop because I want to use my fixer and stop later on. Um, the other day I was developing uh, another roll of film and my stop bath went purple with the uh, anti-halation dye on the film. So I'm going to give this one a pre-wash, just see what happens. So this is uh, just normal water at 20 degrees, same temperature as my chemicals. So we'll just give that a pre-wash now. Throw that in. Now, I found in the past that this doesn't give any uh, problems to the developing at all by not pre-washing it, but it was just the other day that my fixer went purple. Um, because of the dye on the film. After I developed it, I tipped the developer away and then went through the fix and uh, I was stopping the fix. And I noticed my fixer had changed color. Um, so I'm just going to give this one a good pre-wash pre before I start the development process. And this is all I'm doing. I'm going to get most of it off anyway. Look at that nasty blue stuff. That's off now. Probably still some on there, but I don't want that getting into my fixer or my chemicals because I want to reuse my stop and fix. I'm just going to give it one more pre-wash with clean water again. Same temperature. Hopefully, got some decent photographs in there. Not too sure yet. Let's see. Oh, still coming out blue, look at that. <laughs> Could probably keep going. Probably all my photographs are in there. No. Right. 
Okay, so I'm using the uh, one part to one part x -tol. So I've got 400 milliliters of x -tol, 400 milliliters of just normal tap water. And there's my timer there. And I've looked at the massive dev, dev chart. It says, I think it was nine minutes, 25 seconds, but I'm just gonna go for 10 minutes and uh, see what happens. So just type 10 minutes in there. In goes the developer. And this is all at 20 degrees, it's all been checked. Now it should fill the tank up 800 milliliters. Be generous because you don't want to um, miss any of the development. Okay, start the time. And I'll just agitate one, two, three, four, five. I'll just agitate um, every five turns, just like that, every minute until the timer runs out after 10 minutes. Then I'll stop, then I'll fix, and then I'll wash the film and hang it out to dry. Okay, so um, looking back over the shoot that I did, um, you know, like I said before, I've never really gone into this long exposure on film and, and used the reciprocity values either, very, well, not very much, and if I have done in the past, it hasn't been very successful. But um, like I said, 2019, and I wanna try and get some long exposure photography going and uh, you know, try and get some good results as well. I'm not too bothered if this doesn't come out good. I'm gonna learn from it. I've written down my times. I know how I metered um, using the incident light meter. And uh, you know, if these come out underexposed, not so good. If they come out overexposed, I can still work with them. Um, but at least, just gonna change this uh, agitation again. But at least, um, one, two, three. Five. At least I would have learned by my experiences. You know, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. It's only photography, and uh, if I make mistakes, I'll go off and I'll be able to learn from those mistakes for the next time I shoot. I like looking back. Really, I'd like to have had my DSLR with me so I could have seen what I was doing a little bit better. But then, you know, back in the day of film photography before DSLRs were around, you you, you wouldn't have had that opportunity. So. I suppose just taking the light meter without a DSLR, um, kind of just relying on my own instincts, I suppose, uh, taking these photographs. But if these negatives come out shit, basically, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I'll just dust my shoulders off, take, uh, take on board my mistakes and go out and do it again and see what we get next time. But I am quite confident that I'm going to have a couple of decent photographs to print. So uh, anyway, I'm going to stop rambling, turn the video camera off, do the rest of this development, get the film washed, get it dried, and then get it onto that enlarger and hopefully come out with a decent print. So it's the second day now after developing the negatives and letting them out to dry. I had a little dabble in the dark room and uh, I started getting a bit tired. So I gave up and come back today with a fresh mind. As you can see behind me, I've been playing around uh, with one of the photographs that I really liked, uh, funnily enough, with the rocks in. And um, this is one of the photographs that I've, I've kind of, hopefully I've nailed, but uh, I'm going to show you guys how I got around uh, making this uh, final print. In fact, I haven't even made a final print. That was the last print there. You can see my scribbles on it. Um, so I'm going to make another one. In fact, I'm probably going to make two more. So um, I'll show you the print and uh, I'll get on with showing you how I made it in the dark room. So the first thing I did was made a contact sheet just, just so I can see, you know, really the exposures and also if they're in focus or not, because that Zeiss Icon Neto has got no autofocus on it at all. Um, so you, you kind of have to judge the distance. Um, but these are uh, the images that I took. This was the um, first one, second, third, fourth, and so on. 
Uh, that's a, a screw up there. I don't know what happened there. And in fact, that was a blank frame. I skipped. I, I, I went from um, frame. What does that say on there? Frame six to seven. I didn't take a shot on seven. I, then I went to eight. So um, <laughs> that's an unexposed shot. Uh, nine. That was completely overexposed. The shutter release cable got stuck without me realising. That's what happened there. Uh, 10, 11 and 12. These are the ones that I did at f22, uh, 15 seconds. Um, these actually look all right. I can work with them a little bit. They look a bit, a little bit underexposed, but um, you know, I'd rather the overexposed ones than underexposed. They're easier to work on. Um, this rock I started looking at, but I wasn't too impressed with the sharpness around the rock. So these two here were probably my favourites, and this is the one that I started to work on. So I'll just show you what I was doing with that. Uh, this was the first print that I did after a series of test prints. Um, this was no filters at all, and um, I think it was. I think I had 10 seconds on this, and then burned the sky in and burned the sand. I tried to get a darker sky, but really, this is the focal point. So I didn't want this area here to be dark. I wanted it to pop. So um, I then started to use contrast filters just to try and make this area to, to work on the middle area here. This was the second print, and I used a contrast five filter. Um, just only a contrast 5 filter just to see um, where it would go and you can see the middle there is I've got, I've got nothing there at all basically um, you can just start seeing the rocks working so um, I ended up doing some more test strips uh, dabbling around and you can see here these are the test strips I made now I literally was just concentrating on this particular test strip I just took a piece of paper put it on the sky and saw what happened with no contrast filters at um, between 20 and 30 seconds I uh, wasn't too happy with the sky. So then I started to work on the middle of the um, photograph just to see if I can try and get the, the centre of the photograph, the rocks, to try and pop. I wanted to, the highlights to come out and the blacks to be black. So I did a contrast 5 filter at uh, 10 seconds and no filter at 10 seconds. That's what I come up with. The next one was, um, I wanted, it was just, just still too dark, so I did the next one at uh, 5 seconds with no filter and 10 seconds with contrast 5 filter and it starts to get there but the blacks aren't black enough so the last one I did was 5 seconds no contrast filter and 20 seconds with a contrast 5 filter and I started to get where I wanted to go which kind of leaves me onto the last print or the last actual test print that I made and I'm quite happy with it you can see I've, got, I've wrote my timings down here so the overall print was five seconds, no filter, 20 seconds with a contrast five filter, the whole lot. And then I just burned in with no filters at all, the sky for another 20 seconds, and then burnt the bottom part of the image for another 20 seconds as well, because I want this area to be the most prominent when people look at the print. And it's also important to get the horizon straight as well, nice and sharp, which it is. So that's where I am at the moment. I could still do with a little bit darker at the top here, and a little bit darker in this area here as well. So um, that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. And uh, let's get a piece of paper on the enlarger and I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is my baseboard area that I'm working on. Um, you guys have seen this before, new subscribers, you might not have seen this before. But uh, this is basically a cardboard template that I put the paper under. It's a 10 by 10 inch, which is gonna make the photograph uh, size for me. And I use these clamps just to hold it down there's probably other ways you can do this, but this is the way I've done it and it works for me. You can see the negatives in the enlarger ready to go. I do have a, in, um, a filter carrier on this enlarger, but I just use this little, uh, this is a safe um, filter for the enlarger. I take that out and I just place my contrast filter underneath there like that. Works the same. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so let's uh, get a piece of paper out. I'm still using my uh, Kentmere 16 by 12 paper. I like this paper a lot, it's glossy. And uh, I like the blacks on it. Works well for me. So I just slide it underneath the... Paper like so, underneath the um, cardboard template there. Cut the excess off and I can use that as test strips for another time. back in the box 
and then I just put my little clamps down because I don't want any light seeping underneath while I'm printing. Okay, so hopefully you can see the, the baseboard now. I'm just going to give it a quick waft, make sure no hairs have fallen onto the paper. Just use this, just, oops, a bit too much, but just waft that away. And I'm going to do an oval production, first of all, five seconds. There it goes. You probably can't see it because of the red light. That's five seconds. Now I'm going to put the contrast five filter in. If I remove the red light, you might see it. I don't know. Let's have a go. So the contrast five filter is now going to go in for 20 seconds. And I'm just going to occasionally waft. Just so no dust or hair falls on to the paper. Like so, take the fire filter off. And uh, so I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. You should be able to see what I'm doing actually. Uh, you can't, you won't be able to see the print because of the red light, but um, <laughs> it is there. So um, the last one was 20, I was blending 20 seconds in. So I wanted it darker, so I'm gonna do it for 30 seconds. So I'm gonna work on the sky first. It's tricky for me to see with that red light shining on it. I'll turn that off for the next bit. Okay, that's done. I'll just pull the red light off for a bit. Hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to do the bottom part now for 30 seconds. And I'm just gradient, pulling it down, and then start twisting into the corners, just to make that sand a bit blacker. Now just coming down to the bottom, still twisting into the corners, like so. Hopefully, Hopefully that's worked. So the last thing to do is to put the insert back in and then clamp that down. And that's going to give me a black border. Just keep that held down and then take the negative out and just burst white light onto it for a few seconds. That'll give me a nice black border. That's done. Now time to develop. And it goes to the development. You should start seeing it coming through in a minute. I'll let this run so you can see it coming through. Slight mistake on there already with the uh, border. But that's no problem. Can always do a reprint and this is still really a test print because I'm now doing 30 seconds and not 20 on the sand in the sky So this is the final print now. Um, I managed to sort out that border. It was just a little bit, um, a little bit warped inside the template that I've got. But uh, I'm really happy with it, the way it's came out, especially as it's my kind of like first attempt at uh, doing some long exposure photography. And also with that Zeiss Icon Netar, because it's not the easiest of cameras to use. Next time I may take the Mamiya 645 or even 35 mil out so I can do a little bit better focusing maybe. Um, but it's, it still looks nice. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some selenium toner and give it a little bit of toning. It's on resin paper and the selenium tone that I'm gonna use, I'll just show you. 
is this. I've got this, thanks a lot to uh, my Patreons um, for their client pledges because it enables me to get little extra chemicals like this from the dark room and have a play around. And this is called Selenia Black and White Print Toner. And if I read, it says uh, improvement of archive stability, 10 minutes. Increases of maximum blackness is four minutes and influence of image toning 30 to 60 minutes. So I'm going to stick it in this selenium toner for four minutes um, and see how it looks. See the before and after, I suppose. So uh, let's get on with this. So I've already put the selenium toner inside here. Um, I've mixed it as it says on the instructions, which is one part to 20 parts water and uh, it's at a normal room temperature, so in it goes. It's, it's really smelly, this stuff, actually. So I'm just going to agitate it. I'll put the timer. I've got a timer up here. It's off camera. Uh, four minutes. And I'm just going to agitate this now for four minutes. So that's the end of my darkroom session. I only made one print from those 12 negatives. I'm not gonna, you know, it was just a test for me really to have a little dabble with some long exposure and reciprocity failure for the T-Max 100 film. And uh, I managed to get a decent result out of it. I was quite happy with what I've got. Uh, I've got two prints, in fact, I've got three prints that I've made. Uh, two are uh, selenium toned and the other one's not. I'll put those up at the end of the video if you just see they're drying at the moment. So uh, yeah, quite happy with the overall shoot and the darkroom session as well and the final print I've got. Um, there's the negatives there, I'll keep them. Um, I will be writing some details down about them as well. And, uh, and this is my little notes from the um, photographs that I took, the exposure times and the metering times. So I'll keep that as well for future reference. But over the coming uh, months, I wanna get over the, uh, to the beaches and do some more longer exposures. I think it was a bit difficult with these ice icon netar because you have to guesstimate the, the distance for your, your focal distance. So next time I might take the Mamiya 645 down um, where I can get a little bit more accurate focus um, on, on my photographs. So uh, anyway, guys, hope you liked the video. Um, thanks to all the subscribers and all the new subscribers. Thanks for the likes, the dislikes, the comments as well, and all the, your private messages and emails that I get. I really do appreciate it. And also your help when people are helping me in the darkroom as I'm helping others. So uh, really do appreciate it. Happy New Year, and uh, I'll come out with another video soon. Thanks a lot. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.